Hey everyone and welcome to today's video. So we've got another R53 content. So I'm going to start off with the R52 to explain what it is and then we'll move to the GP which is the same as an R53 on what we're fitting. Okay and I'll start here because if you see on the convertible obviously it has no roof and um, so that we have these little extra strut braces just down here. So obviously because it doesn't have any roof the structural rigidity of the car is compromised. So what Mini did, they put chassis braces underneath the car and they put these at the front of the car. Um, so one of the mods that people like to do on an R53 and an R50 is actually take these Cabrio braces from an R52 and fit them. So why do they do that? And lots of people ask me that when I've fitted these to previous R53s. So people want to know, is there a dramatic difference in the handling of the car by adding these? No, just like a upper strut brace, you're not necessarily going to notice uh, it suddenly transformed the driving. But as an entire suspension package in terms of coilovers, strut braces, the cabrio braces, everything adds to stiffen up that chassis and help with handling. So for me, it's definitely a worthwhile mod. One, because it will have that suspension benefit or handling benefit. Two, they look pretty cool. Like this, these are quite boring at the moment. They're in black, so they don't really stand out too much in the engine bay. But if you want to add a splash of colour into your engine bay, you can actually get them painted or powder coated, whatever colour you want, take them to a local body shop or rattle cam them yourself. And it just adds something a little bit more interesting to the uh, front end of your car as well. Over the years, the price of these has actually gone up, gone up quite significantly. So you used to be able to get them for about 15, 20 quid. Now, I think for Mini, they're about between, I would say around 50 pound plus, including the bolts. So trying to buy them second hand, you're probably gonna see them around 50 pound on eBay or Facebook Marketplace, etc. So I think I managed, I think I got mine for about 40 pounds off eBay. So I got them, they're painted in a bright red color. So someone had had a go at rattle canning them, they weren't great. So I wanted to get something that worked with my engine bay. So if we see here, Obviously that's the GP that they're going on. We've got lots of black. I didn't want to go black because it wouldn't stand out. The red was a bit much. I don't want to go too crazy on the red, but we've obviously got the satin bronze wheels, so the BBS wheels. My um, local powder coating company did the wheels for me um, for when I did those last year. So I went back to them this week and asked them to do me a set of these. So you can see just here. They're in satin bronze to match those wheels. See there, it's a perfect match because it's all done by the same company. The powder coated the wheels. So all that'll do, I don't know which side I've got here. Yep, that is the right side. They sort of go around there and you can see it just adds up a little bit of splash of color and something a little bit interesting, as well as having the benefits from a suspension perspective. So can you fit these to your R53? The answer is yes. But depending on which R53 or R50 you have, it'll be a little bit more complicated. So let me talk you through that. So obviously with my car here, it's uh, 2006. So it's 100% a facelift. It's one of the last cars that were produced in this generation. And because it's a facelift, you can see we've got these little rubber bungs because the chassis was the same for all the R52s and the R53s. This part, anyway, um, they had those holes in the chassis ready to go. So we can actually move some of these bits out of the way in the engine bay and bolt these with eight bolts straight to the chassis. Perfect, done. Now, if you have a pre-facelift car, so that's sort of a 99 slash 2000 all the way up to 2004, sort of mid 2004. So you'll notice the difference with obviously the headlights because you have the, the different headlights, the interior bits, there's some differences on the pre-facelift model. So if your clock, for example, is up um, by the mirror, then that means yours is a pre-facelift. You won't have the holes. Now you'll still have these flat sections, but without the drilled holes. So if you knew someone that could weld, and I've seen it done, people actually weld these in place so they're a permanent attachment to the car. So it's not impossible to fit them to a pre-facelift, but for a quick bolt on, you have to have a facelift car. So I know RKDE, who did the roof shop, Rich Everett, he actually has a set of these and his car was a pre-facelift. So he's actually welded those in place on his. So he does run them, but they're welded rather than bolting around. 
Okay, so down here, the strut brace bolts in here and then down here. So we've got to get these caps removed first. So try a plastic trim removal tool and just see if you can get underneath and get those off. Sometimes you can't and sometimes you've got to get a little metal one in to pull those out. So that's one cap out. And we'll put the same out up here. So that's two out. And there's little threaded sections in there. Now there's two further ones just down here and here. We'll remove those as well. Try not to scratch the paintwork too much if you're using a metal tool. If you do, just blob a bit of paint over it just to stop any corrosion happening. Now to get this one in, you will have to undo this bolt here. So I'll go and get a socket for that now. Okay, so this earthing strap just needs to come out of the way. So we just get a 13 mil socket and get that off. Let's put that up there to keep that safe. I've got to remember to put that back on. Okay. Then all we do, now it's down to personal preference in terms of, so that bigger section goes at the top. And it's whether you run these cables above or below, I think run below so it's nice and clear. And then all you need to do is grab your bolts. So you get those with them. So if you order, this from Mini brand new, you can obviously order the bolts from them. You get it second hand off a car that's been broken, etc. Always ask them to supply the bolts because it's just always extra cost. And I'm sure they'll probably include the bolts for free if you buy them second hand, they're not gonna charge you for them more than I thought. So just do them up by hand first. Just make sure you're not cross threading any of them, obviously, because there's been a rubber bung in there. They might be a bit dirty or whatever, so you want to make sure they're actually going up properly before you start doing them up with a tool. You don't want to cross thread anything. Okay, so that's that one in. And because my bolts were used, I've just given them a quick polish, so they're a little bit fresher. Now this one, I always remember being a pain to get in because it's underneath. Obviously the ideal solution would be to get this arch liner out of the way, but I think we can probably maneuver it in. A little bit tricky, but I think got that in. And then we might just have to get a smaller tool just to get that one done up. Try and do it as much by hand. Then we might need to get like a little ratchety tool or something to get that in. So then just use a T30. And then, yeah, I'm gonna have to get a, some sort of ratchet tool, I think, just a little bit smaller just to get in. But you can see that's nice and Solid, that's not going anywhere. Your cables are nicely protected, so they're not gonna get caught up anywhere. So that's that side in. Now you gotta to remember to put this earth strap back on. Don't forget that, because you could have problems later down the line if you don't attach that earthing strap. That up with the gun. Okay, and that's all back and in place so let's go to the other side okay so when it comes to the passenger side it's a little bit more tricky but just because we've got some cable management to deal with but again not too bad so let's just pop these caps out of the way that's two now been a while since I've done one of these I think we've got some mountain holes down here. So we need to get this unclipped first because if we put this in place, you can see 
that's going to get blocked. So there's a bolt down here and I think this bolt here needs to come undone. So let's get some pliers to squeeze this to get this undone first. And all you do is a little little lugs on this back of this bracket. You just have to squeeze those in to pull that out. It's a bit tricky. Especially when you're trying to record. But we'll get that out. Let's move that out of the way so we can see what's going on. Right, okay, what it might be worth doing is actually getting this bracket off rather than trying to unclip it. So there's a bolt just here, or a nut, sorry, just here so I'll work out what size and get that off. Right, that was a lot harder than I first thought. So just in here, so let me see if I can move that out of the way. So just in here, there's this it looks like that. So that was going through into the chassis. Now what you have to do is put a 19 mil socket over the top of this and take it off. I've managed to split it, but I don't need to reuse this anyway with the cabrio brace because I've got new bolts, so that doesn't matter. But what it means is this bracket's now out of the way. So we need this to put onto the strut brace, which clips onto there, but that's easy enough. Just with a pair of pliers. And we've got that off. Okay. So just below this wire, again, it's all very hard to see, but as soon as you're down here, it's obvious. There's a little plastic bung there. Let's just get that out of the way. So it's exactly the same plastic bung as what you've removed at the top. And it becomes pretty obvious, even if you can't see here, as soon as you start trying to put this strut brace, because this bigger end always goes at the top. So we know that bolts into there. And then as you put this against the chassis, again, you'll be able to see now. Again, there's a bolt that's right against this, so you could take wheel arch liners out to make it easier. Um, but again, I will do that one up by by hand to start with and see how we get on. So if you see, it's just there. And the bolt, can only, the, the, the brace can only fit in one place. So if you are struggling to work some of this out now, what I might have done is made a little mistake here and I might have to take it back off. So I think this, if you look, I should have clipped that on there. So that needs to be on that side of that brace. So don't make the mistake I did. Just drop that off, but at least you learn with me as we go along. And as always, I don't know the answers to everything. A lot of this is just take things apart and see how they go to get back together. And I haven't put cabrio braces on a car for a good few years. Okay, so let's get that out of the way. Okay, so if we take our brace, we know this clips into here. There you go, so that's on. Which means this must locate that side of the brace because that then goes into there. So that will go onto there eventually. So it's just trying to work out, based on the wiring, where we run everything. So does that overlap, maybe? It's just trial and error until we get something that fits. Okay, so just to, what I've done is gone and had a look at the convertible, so I know exactly where the wiring runs on that. So, the big cable goes underneath the strut brace, but this cable goes over the top, and you've got this aircon line in the way that we'll have to get round, but then sits like that. So that's how it's done by factory, so that's how it is on the R52 over there, so I'm not making that up. But now, what you've got to do is make sure, because there's a bit of pressure pushing on this cable to start with, but that's fine. You just start to pin it in place with the bolts. And then once all the bolts are loosely in finger tight, we can then start to nip them up. 
and lock it in place. But I just want to get everything just in, finger tight. This one right at the bottom is going to be the trickiest to get in with the wheel arch liner in the way. But I think we should. Be able to get it. Right, let's keep that one out for a second. So I'm hoping now that's in place, this should manoeuvre into here. The clips just go at either end, there we go. And that fits snugly against that. not going anywhere now we need to figure this bar out so you've got a couple of options you can jack your car up in the air and just drop this corner of the arch liner out or there's little ratchet um, screwdrivers that you can get to do that bolt up so I've got one coming in the post but yeah it's gonna be difficult to try and get that in by hand but that at least you know you've got to work to get that in down there Okay, so if we step back now from the engine bay, you can just see we've got those braces down there. Now, they all have this spare hole, so don't worry about that. There's never a nut or a bolt to put through on those. But you can see, one, it adds to that suspension package we were talking about. But two, it just adds something a little bit interesting under the bonnet as well, a little splash of colour. So whatever reason you fit them for, that's up to you. But I just like both aspects of it. Okay, so you can see here we've got that brace and then we've got the matching wheel. So I really like the look of that. So if you found today's video useful, please hit that thumbs up button to like it. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you get alerts every time we upload new content. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.